Okay. Um, I am going to be talking about encrypted connections today, and I just want to say I always use travel pictures, but I have not traveled anywhere in the last few months, so you're going to see some repeats, but um, <laughs> they're fun. So the best way to get a hold of me if you have any questions or want to chat afterward is email. Um, I also, at the end, I have a links or contact ways to contact me. I have the PowerPoint or a PDF version of it and the script I'm going to use available on my GitHub. So a little bit about me for those of you that we have not met yet. Um, I used to teach high school journalism and English and then college. I taught for a long time, the dreaded comp one, comp two, research writing, et cetera. And then um, after a difficult divorce, I needed to uh, work full time. I had been working in adjunct. And so I went through launch code and um, I was in the very first SQL cohort. And then got a great, wonderful job at NISA, which is um, an investment firm here in St. Louis. And Kathy, I had work, been working with Kathy Fellenberger, and then she asked me to uh, take over as mentor. For, so that was a huge honor for me. So I still teach launch code um, and have been doing so for quite a while. I am passionate. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I am passionate about database security, and that is what um, all my topics pretty much are. Sorry, I'll try to not walk around quite so much. Okay. What I have found passion is database security. And what I have found is online, you can go really deep in the weeds and there's information on that, or there's very introductory information but it's been very challenging to find information in the middle. You know, for those of us who are still on our journey to learn more about database security. So that is where I am trying to uh, help bridge that gap. That's where I am and that's where I wanna share my experience with. Specifically with encrypted connections, I'm gonna assume that you're very familiar with SQL Server, but may, maybe have not yet set up your environment to use encrypted connections. If you have, I would love to learn from you and get um, more information. I've, we've been doing it for several years at my company, but um, I'm, I'm always learning more. <laughs> oh, and go eat lunch. And um, so with Microsoft making some changes, Particularly, what was noticeable is in their latest version of SSMS, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But your friendly DBA might be coming to you and asking you to start encrypting your connections, and you'll be, you may be saying, "What? I want to know more about this." So that's my expectations for the day. In SSMS 20, if you have not set up an environment to use encrypted connections, it now defaults to encrypted and you may be getting this nasty error message. And we'll talk about that more. But that is precipitated people really um, being more interested in encrypting their connections. So we will get into that more in depth. Three types of encryption, data at rest, data in use, data in transit. The first one, data at rest, this is where the database is stored. Microsoft's solution for this one is TDE, something data encryption. I forgot what T stands for. There we go, thank you. Transparent data encryption. There's a slight performance hit with this one, not much. And your storage admin is probably going to tell you that the storage level takes care of all this. You don't need anything more. SQL Server data uh, security experts will say that is not enough. So that that is something that you would want to test for your own company and look into more. Data and use is just like it sounds. 
while it's being used. And so uh, Microsoft solution for this one is called Always Encrypted. And there is a performance hit on this one. So you will definitely want to do a lot of testing before you ever um, before you ever decide whether or not to go that direction. The one we're going to talk about today is data in transit. Data in transit, just like it sounds, data is going from one system to another. And during that time where it's um, moving, it is very vulnerable. So this is what we're going to talk about. I really like the metaphor, and I don't remember where I read it, so I can't give credit, but um, if you remember, if you know, let me know about sealing the envelope. So if I'm a, I have some information and I need to get it to you and I put it in an envelope and then a courier takes it over to you and you open it, anybody in the middle can open that envelope and get that information out, look at it, put it back in and you wouldn't be none the wiser. So it's kind of like that unencrypted connections, that data is vulnerable during that transit time. Um, data in transit, that's all those connection strings that you have to you know, update and keep up. That's all that. There's a very slight performance hit to uh, de encrypting connections, but it is so slight, you will not notice it. So best practice, move in this direction. Oh, this is a picture of my daughter, Allison, on Angel's Landing, where we went last fall, and that scared the daylights out of me. I did not do that. did not do that one. Before SQL Server 2016, we used SSL, uh, which is just using certificates to validate the server. And then they improved the security around it and switch to um, TLS. You will normally see it TLS slash SSL. That's how you will see it, the handshake. It's the newer version with more security. I have a link in here. Oh, I made the GitHub a PDF. I better, I'll add the link in there later tonight. Um, Microsoft, there's a a uh, link that goes in great depth on authentication if you're interested. Yeah, it's here, but on my GitHub, because the PowerPoint was too big, I saved it as a PDF. So I'll have to switch to not embedding the link. Okay, so your environment you may or may not be set up. And there's three different places that you can be in. No, I haven't set up anything. Nobody can use encrypted connections. Even It doesn't matter what they put in their connection string. Can't be done. Environment is not set up. So we're going to, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today is how to set that up. The next possibility is sometimes. So you can have your environment is set up, you have your security cert, et cetera, but not all of your third-party apps will use the encrypted connections or something like that. So the sometimes means the environment is set up. If I have encrypt equals true in my connection string, it will work. However, it doesn't require it. And then the third option is I am forcing everyone to use encrypted connections. As a DBA, I'm going to tell you before you force encryption, test, 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 test. You need to know that all of your third party apps will work with encrypted connections. And that sounds like it should be an easy one, but um, I have found that that is not necessarily an easy thing to do. Uh, so, but that's our goal. That's where we also move toward is forcing those encrypted connections. That is clearly the most secure. And yes, that's my daughter sitting on the edge of the Grand Canyon. She's crazy like that. 
Hi, Allison. <laughs> Okay, there's three, if you need to, so um, let me back up. In order to set up your environment to use encrypted connections, we are going to need to have a security certificate. And we're going to, I'm going to show you the cheater way that's not as good today, which is the self-signed cert. Um, better than nothing but a self-signed cert and that's what i'm going to show you it's super easy to do however you are trusting the person so i'm saying i'm sharing i'm sharing i'm the one telling you that i'm sharing so if you're have a courier sent that sealed envelope to me and i'm saying i promise i'm sharing you know i may or may not be lying and so that would be like a self-signed cert that is saying, yes, I, you know, and so we'll talk about that a little bit. This one is, it encrypts the connections, but you, it's not a trusted authority. So you have to do something else to make it work. Not great. The next best option, uh, a good option, is if your company, um, ha whoever is managing the Active Directory at your company can set up a, either a cert for you or maybe set up a template so that you can create the certs yourself. So SQL Server security certs, that will work inside that, um, that company. So in your internet. It won't work if you have connections outside of the company but if the connections are all inside the company, it is trusted, it is good. The ideal situation, I guess this would be like if I said, okay, courier, you can trust everyone in my house. Nobody outside the house, but if they're in my house, you can trust them like that. The best would be a third party certificate authority because that's a third party saying, yes, this server really is what it says, saying it is. Um, the problem with that one is that those are costly. So companies, you know, will only use those when they need to. So, but it is the, the, the golden standard. Okay, so when we create a security cert, there are three steps to doing so. The first one is to create the cert. Next is that private key. And we're gonna go through all these steps. And then configure SQL Server to use your cert. So create the cert, private key, use uh, update SQL Server to use the cert. So the first thing we're gonna do, and because I don't have unlimited amounts of money, um, we are gonna create a self-signed cert and I'll kind of show you why it's not the best, but um, this is super easy. And all I have to do, because I use DBA tools, so you can see that was the last one I did, but I'm going to create another one. And I used DBA tools, so we have new DBA computer certificate, self sign. And done. Okay, so again, we're gonna demo with the self sign insert, but um, for your company, your production, I would not do that. I would not use this self sign insert. I would go with the Active Directory in company, cert store, or third party if you need to. Okay. Creation search through PowerShell there automatically have it into cert managers. I'm going to show you. So, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, what I'm going to do is let's see. The next thing I'm going to do, because I've created my cert and we'll show out, uh, we'll pull it up in a second, is I am going to give the, the um, private key the ability to use that cert 
And this is a really important step because if you forget it, you will not be able to use SQL Server. It will just not. And you will like, what I do? So don't do that. This is a really important step. So we are going to um, actually show you how to get here. So what we're going to do is we are going to type in MMC run my command there we go i'm going to go up to file add remove snap in and i'm going to add my certificate snap in add it over here computer account and i have these screenshots in the powerpoint uh, local computer. Okay. So now I can open that up. I'm looking in personal. And you can see the one I had before from last week. And then the one I just created. It's right there in the search store. Okay, so I said I wanted to make sure that the private key can manage this. So what I'm going to do, I am going to check my configuration manager. I am going to make sure that I look at the what I'm using to log in as. And I'm just telling you, if you have a lot of servers, ideally it's the same, but it may not be. So I am really paranoid about this step. And I always, always check the server, the, the service that is being used. Because otherwise, when you restart your service, it won't restart. Ask me how I know. Oh, okay. So yes, MS SQL Server. So let's see where I'm at. Showed you how to get the, um, okay. I'm gonna go to all tasks. No, I'm not. All tasks, then go to manage private keys. And you'll see that that MS SQL Server is not listed. So if I switch, currently I'm using a different self sign cert, so it would still work. But if I actually get to the step where I apply it, then it would not work because that, that private key needs access to. So I'm going to add. Um, Okay. Yeah, it's the only one I have. And all those are options. Hmm. That. <laughs> okay, so. The one that works that I've done, all tasks, manage private keys, MS SQL Server. So 
I go to this one, all tasks, manage private keys, add. Nope, don't want that. I am lying, so I don't want to do that. Um, okay, we're going to go on and I will come back to this, figure out what I'm doing wrong. So, if you look on that one, you'll notice it didn't have my service. If I apply this cert that I just created, SQL Server will not be able to restart its service. So I'm not gonna do that. But if you look at the one that I've already done and we go to manage private keys, you can see it has permissions for, uh, MS SQL Server in there. So that's the one I already confirmed. That's what my service is using. And you want to make sure that it has read. Um, okay. So the next thing I'm going to show you, if I go to my cert, the one that's working, the one that is being used currently, I right click, I go down to properties. And I want to make sure that the server authentication is checked because that's what it's doing. This, the purpose of this is to authenticate my server. So I want to make sure that that is checked. I've confirmed that. Great. Let's see what um, did that to that to that. Okay. So first thing we did, we created our cert. Then we made sure that that private key has permission to read that cert. Very important. Do not stress that enough. You do not want to be called at two in the morning when your server restarted and have to um, figure out why it didn't start. So. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to configure SQL Server to use our new cert. It doesn't do us any good to create it if we don't apply it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go this time to SQL Server uh, Configuration Manager. I'm going to go down to this protocols for MS SQL Server down here. Yes. Yeah. If you go back to configuration manager, it says MS service minus MS SQL Server. You have to put that on. Maybe. Maybe. I'll go back and try it. Okay. Um, yeah, very likely, possibly. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this protocols and we are going to go down to properties. And this is where if you are really, um, you've really tested everything, you know everything is using encrypted, you have a process that is going through checking all the connections to make sure they're all actually encrypted, which I will show you in a little bit. Um, and you can want to force encryption, this is where you would do it. You're under properties for on your SQL Server configuration manager. We are not going to do that today. So then we're going to go to cert certificate, which is the second tab. And you can see there's multiples. This one is the one that I just created that 
I'm not going to switch to because I haven't figured out the private key part yet. So we're going to go back to the one that is currently in use. Um, if when I'm doing these like at work, I'm not using the self sign cert, but they they still have the same name, and so uh, I will look at the expiration date to see what I've created today is how I know which cert it can be. Um, so there's that. I like to include like if I'm creating a new cert, I like to make sure that the previous one is still there in case I need to go back to it. Um, if there's a problem with the cert and there's issues and you've got pager page, you're being paged all over the place, then you can go back. So I'm, I just always like to have a backup plan, uh, DBA in me. There we go. In here, we can view and look at the details of your cert. Um, One of the places where it's not really showing a lot here, but if your company uses C names, then you would need to have a cert that lists all the C names that go to that server. And that's why when I said that I create certs, you know, before they expire, it's because we've added a C name. Obviously, once you've created a cert, you can't just add things to it. You have to create a new cert. So this is where you could get a list. Is that subject alternative name section, and you can have a list of all the alternatives that you can log into your server as. So you could use the fully qualified name, the shortened name, the and any C names that you use. So very important. A lot of work. The description, you can actually change the description. I said you can't change a cert, but the description is not part of the cert. It's a description of the cert. So, okay. Um, if we were going to actually do this because I got my private key to work, then once it's up showing here and I click okay, it would tell me that I have to restart the service. You don't have to restart the server, the SQL server, you have to restart the service. So any changes will not will be saved. However, they will not take effect until the service is stopped and restarted. So if I were gonna go into my configure, whoop, configuration manager, and I would just right click here, and restart and you want to be aware that you have to restart the service before a new cert is applied that way you don't do this in the middle of a production day you know um, I like to if at all possible coordinate new certs with patching or sometime when you're going to be restarting the server anyway that is I call them patching Saturdays, you know, cert Saturday. Um, if you have any new C names and you need a new cert, let me know ahead so that I can coordinate that because you don't want to just go around randomly starting production servers in the middle of the day. I don't know about you. Maybe you can, but I would not. Okay. Do you, do you have a cert issue when this is uh, released? That way, I mean, I don't know if you could fortify this in PowerShell or something. I love UI, but going to different UIs. Um, uh, DBA Tools has quite a few things that you could do for certs. Um, I have used some of it, but not all of it. We haven't, like, you would want to use PowerShell if you were applying certs for a, a, a number of servers at the same time. I have not done that we've done them onesie twosies and um so i have not but yes dba tools is all about so when i said that you know microsoft and we'll show that in a little bit um updated ssms uh 20 
to default to using encrypted connections? Well, DBA tools did the same, which apparently broke a lot of people's stuff. And so, um, there you go. Encrypted connections. <laughs> Defaulting to things is great, but people need to know what it is. And it, it does kind of move the, the needle forward. Okay, let's go back to that PowerPoint. Um, restart the service. Okay, so to configure it, you're just going to go into SQL Server Configuration Manager, that network configuration, you select it, you choose the cert, and remember, I look at the dates. Um, you can update the description, I guess you can kind of look at that, and then you re have to restart that service. So uh, what I might do is on a Friday at the very end of the day, I might apply the cert on the weekend that patching is happening. It's kind of how I do it. And that hasn't caused you any problems if there was an issue with a patch needed to roll back to understand which thing is actually causing the problems? It, that's a good question. Um, I did not, when we first started doing the server certs, I did not connect it to patching for that exact reason. Um, we've been doing them now long enough that it hasn't been an issue. And I, I check. So I, I'm in there on a Saturday, like making sure that you can still log in, et cetera. So, um, yeah. But when I first start, when we first started applying these certs, um, I did not do it on that. That's a good point. I did not do it on patching Saturday for that reason, because I wanted it separate so that I could troubleshoot more easily. Okay, SSMS 18 or 19, let's flip over, I'll show you. If we go to connect to a data or to a SQL server, notice what is not showing up here. There's no check mark boxes where I can say, yes, use encrypted connections. They're here, they're just not on the first uh, pop-up. So you have to actually go over to options and then encrypt those connections. I don't know about you, but how many people do you think are going to take that extra step each time? Exactly. Um, in all fairness, I can't just blame the developers because when I, I told you I have a process that like checks for unencrypted connection strings that when I was doing this project a few years ago and um, I often showed up there. I mean, we all did because you would forget. So this is how uh, SSMS 18 and 19 are, but if you move to SSMS 20, and I go, To connect, let's to connect. It's right there on the front page. And this one isn't because I have changed it, but it will default to mandatory. It will default to mandatory, which mandatory to me sounded like that's forcing, but it's not. Mandatory just means use the encrypted connections for this connection. That's all it means. So it's the exact same as check that checkbox in SSMS 18, where you check that it you're using encrypted connections. Same thing. Um, and trust server cert is also there. And again, the trust server cert uh, just means I'm telling it, Sharon is saying that I am really Sharon. You know, I'm the one saying it's really me. So do we really, you know, hmm. we would prefer, if at all possible, not to check that box. Now, everybody, when they get that error message, what do you think everybody does? Yeah, they just check the box, but that's 
not where we want to go. Okay, so for this one, I am going to log in optional. Um, and then I'm also going to log in. with a login called Churn encrypts your connections. <laughs> and don't do what I'm doing here. I have my fake user password on a post-it note. Don't do that. But um, there we go, S. Okay. So on this one, instead of optional, I am going to click mandatory. I am not going to trust my server cert, but what's going to happen? What kind of server cert did I use? Did I use a good one with Active Directory? I used a, a, a cheap, uh, yeah, the self-signed. So when I do that and I try to connect, I'm going to get my error message. If I were in a production where uh, environment where I was using my company's Active Directory cert, server cert, then this would be fine. You would not need to check trust server. So that is that is fine. But in this case, but I do have encryption as mandatory. Okay. And I have code, which I have in the GitHub, that is going to bring back Oh, my password again. This is why everybody wants to save their passwords. And I've already forgotten where I'm at. I know, I know. Oh, okay. So here I'm going to run my script and it is pulling back sometimes. So my, the one that I logged in as optional is showing it is not encrypted, but Sharon encrypts her connections, even though I had to check that server, trust server is still showing as encrypted. So it's like, moving the needle forward but not as much as we would like for it to be so um the script pulls back the encrypt false or true the name of the server the database that it's used the login login time program name so if they're using an application um, the authorization scheme etc so I did this a lot. I would I would work with um, another team if they were trying to figure out how to encrypt their connections and they would do it and I would pull this, I would run my scripts all the time uh, for them to work, to troubleshoot with them to make sure that they're, uh, they were able to successfully encrypt their connections. Um, I don't have it as part of this, but another thing I did while we were going through that process of um, checking to make sure our connections were encrypted. I used DBA tools to um, pull back the unencrypted connections every, I don't remember how often I did it, like every half an hour or something like that, and dumped it into a table. And so I could look to see, okay, who was the one not encrypting SSMS or what, what applications I needed to have the developers to go back and work with to encrypt. So I did that a lot, um, a lot, a lot. What I'm saying is before you force encryption, you need to spend some time making sure everything is actually encrypted. Otherwise it just breaks and you get paged at two in the morning. Nobody wants that. Offers trust server option. Again, 
that's what everybody defaults to, but really try hard not to do that one. Um, oh, I even have a big X on it. Talked about that. Connection strings. And yes, this is Allison and a gator. What's her face? <laughs> um, that was not me. I did not get in the pool with the gator. For your connection strings, um, all you have to do is add that encrypt equals yes, or maybe encrypt equals true. One of those two will work, hopefully. Um, there's some bugs with, it's not always that easy. Uh, when we did link servers, Try not to use link servers, but if you have to, um, the encrypt equals true works most of the time. But um, we had double hop issues, and so we have a, a bug fix for that. So if anybody wants to know that level of detail on link servers, let me know, and I can tell you what the bug fix is. Um, I have not checked to make sure if, if that was. Uh, the bug fix came from Microsoft. I'm not sure if that was fixed in later in 2022 or not. I have not uh, checked that. So con connection strings. I have another Microsoft link to connection strings here that I will, for the PDF of the PowerPoint, I will make that link actually showing up. So there we go. Yes. Same like connection strings, so mm -hmm. like you that with your SSIS. Yep. Yes. You can do that with SSIS, uh, SSRS, um, link servers, all of those. But you also, like any third party product that uses a connection string to, to get there, that's how you would do it. Um, Red Gate products are super easy to encrypt. So if you use SQL prompt or and not SQL prompt, but like um, SQL compare or SQL data compare. Um, you just check the box. It's and it's right there up front. It's very easy. Redgate has made it easy. Um, let's see what else. There's a lot of them. I mean, you have to like everything. Uh, replication. There's a way to you would encrypt encrypt with that. So, okay. Um, I have some sources and on this one, I actually have the full link, but I will probably try to update that a little bit so that makes it easier for you to, to see what those sources are, but I have some sources here for you. And then my contact information. Um, I have a lot of contact information, but I will tell you, that I rarely go on Mastodon or Blue Sky, so don't, you know, I've tried to get off Twitter, but I haven't been able to, but eat, just email me. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And the uh, GitHub is up. Oh, LinkedIn is another good way to get a hold of me. Uh, I do check LinkedIn on a regular basis. So, questions? Sorry for coming in late. <laughs> At a work meeting that I didn't understand. Um, Have you tried this with Let's Encrypt? What's Let's Encrypt? What do you mean? Well, Let's Encrypt is a third party tool for issuing. Oh, so are issuing the cert authority? And they, yes. And they also are backed by Google. I have they not. also have tools that, that help you automatically update your web servers with new certs because those certs only last 30 days. Or sorry, 90 days. Oh, man, that's not very, very long at all. No, but, no, but when you get yeah. your receipt for something, when you're offering you a free cert that's trusted automatically, oh, yeah. you, you're going to jump through some hoops. I would jump through hoops. Uh, probably not for a production environment. That would be a lot of hoops. 
but for um for something like this i have not tried it um but i will <laughs> yes i will actually probably go home and try it okay well it's your manager um mm -hmm. you have uh, the self-signed service personal did you ever try moving it from personal into i didn't um i i know that there's possibly ways to do such a thing um To me, it, I have not tried it. Okay. But it, um, send me an email, and I will. Well, I will check. Okay, so when I had to sign it myself, mm -hmm. it was already being relatively easy. So I just moved it out of personal into the trusted root authority, and that took Yeah. So if you look in the trusted root authority, you can see all of these uh, certificate authorities that you can, you know, the, the normal ones, VeriSign, DigiCert, et cetera. Um, and what he's saying is that you can move, and I, I have not done that. I have not done a lot with self-signed certs because that's not what we do at work. So I just did that for here, um, but I will probably go try to do that, so. And now I want to go back and see if I can. What, Julie, you said it was NT. Service. Uh, you have to. Yeah, there's a space. Take a look at your uh, configuration. Slash. MS SQL. Yeah. Yay. That did work. Thank you. So let's go ahead and try it. So now that I have done that, um, I'm making sure that it's up here and I have read and I am going to um, apply it. So now it has the private key. So now I'm going to go to Configuration Manager. I'm going to go to my Cert tab. I'm going to go down. I'm going to apply. Hopefully it'll work. The new Cert that we made today. Yes. And now I'm going to get that message saying, okay, you've applied a Cert, but it it's not actually in effect yet until I go up here and I'm going to restart my service. The one step that I think you're missing is to go to your calendar and put a reminder in there <laughs> about 15 days before the cert expires that you better deal with your cert. Um, I, have, I did not include that in here. But you are correct because especially if you're doing it every 90 days, oh my gosh, ours are five years. So, um, well, the, the trend but has been yes, get them for five years, particularly the Star Cert or some of the other ones. Now they are reducing to one year. Exactly. Um, so we we have not, and so I have not um, spent a lot of time. But I know that DBA Tools has a really good way to pull back your cert information. So that's something that would be important to do. Um, we have not had one of my certs <laughs> expire. That would be bad. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, that is not an uncommon problem for people to have a various certs of various kinds. Okay. I'm assuming this is restarted and I am going to. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Um, I'm gonna do Sharon again, Crips. Oh, 
would help if I didn't already have it connected. Mandatory and unfortunately trust server start. There we go. And when I go back over here to um, and if I go up here and I go to properties and I go to certificate, you could see that it is the certificate. It is working. I showed you I could log in. Etc., and it's the certificate that I created today. Yes. Are there implications with? Uh Availability groups, SQL always on you know, when you're replicating data between the different servers automatically? Um, or is, is that not considered a connection? Is that more of the setup of the system and you turn like the TDA, the other encryption on? I'm trying to remember, I have it set up. Um, and it works fine. Um, but I'm not remembering exactly how I did it with the availability groups, to be honest. I, I, I don't have a lot. I have uh, one server that's in an availability group. So we do have it that set up to use encrypted connections. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember what additional steps I had to take. I think there are some. It's a good question, though. Any other questions? Yes. Is this a statistic uh, Microsoft SQL Server, or is it just for other hosted databases that are just explorable? And then, uh, if it is Microsoft SQL Server specific, uh, is there, what part of this? Part of the protocols or maybe infrastructure would be standardizing. Um, certs are not specific to Microsoft. The way I did it is, um, I have not personally done server certs. Now, what I'm familiar with are certs created specifically for SQL Server, and those are different certs. So like at my company, the team that's responsible for Active Directory and the cert store, they have server certs that they use that are not the same that I'm using. They have created a template so I can create my own, but that will work within their structure. So I just use their template to when I'm creating a SQL Server server authentication cert. Does that help? I have not tried it with like Postgres or whatever. I, I, I haven't done it. I'm sure it would be similar. You, have, you look like you have a follow up question. I think I missed too much context. That's fine. Okay, sorry. Um, the, the what we did was specifically for SQL Server. I have not done it for other, but there would be ways to do it. Other questions? This is kind of off topic. Sure. What should you say at work? Not my current job, but a previous job. Is the running off of Microsoft Access was it quite uh, like you can meet uh, something else? <laughs> oh, Access is great for certain um, 
uh, certain use cases. But the, it tends to grow and becomes limited in that regard. Their scalability for access is, you know, limited. We have one database that used to be an access database that is now a SQL Server database with an access on top of it. I have no idea how they got there. I don't really want to know. So what I'm saying is that the people using it think it's still access, but it's not. And I can't wait for this database to go away. <laughs> so I think that was a compromise like what you're talking about, uh, to, to move people away from actually using the access. But, you know. I think they're going to rename it to limited access. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. The Excel spreadsheets. Oh my goodness, yes. I always joke about how everything starts in Excel, goes through a database. SQL Server or whatever, and then it ends up back in Excel. And if they're high up enough. Yep. We want to get into shadow IT. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have some extra time here? Are there other questions? Do we want to do a round table question and answer? Yeah. It's it's a different decision to do. There's encryption at various levels, and um, yeah. But I would I would start with encrypting connections because that has such a negligible uh, performance hit, and it is best practice and fairly mm, fairly easy to start moving in that direction. I would not say it's easy to to get to the level of forcing the connections. Um, you would think you could just call up your third party app vendor and say, how do you encrypt the connections for this? And they would tell you and then you would be on your way. Well, that's a Not a spoken. Not what? Not spoken versus 
you kind of knock the bus from that. Right. And yes and no. Um, that would be a, a DBA project to do. Um, when at my company a few years ago, when we went through all this, I cannot just do it myself and um, have it magically done for everywhere. I worked very closely with developers uh, to make sure that their stuff, you know, was was a, was encrypted and able to be encrypted. And they had to, yeah, it, it was a lot of work. It sounds like it should be fairly easy. And I am telling you that it was a lot of work. So, but it is, you know, kind of also low hanging fruit. It's the first thing I would do. So when your DBA comes and calls you and says, ah, you know, they will probably wouldn't do that. But. <laughs> We are not working well together because they also get a tie and tie. Like you got it, you got it. Oh, uh, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, we run into the push push of Davis. It's a key thing. On this server, we are not able to move it off at all. And they don't know why. So it's been kind of a long time. So oh. it's kind of. But we did include one data. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any problem. Uh, With that one? Yeah, even, even we, don't, we don't have to do any data prior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for the other database that is near, okay. don't touch it. <laughs> the encrypted database near in that um, encrypted server, and then you have to do unencrypted. Um, you most of the servers have come with the key and the store is is accurate. That's also a standard for encrypting the database. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good because part of the part of the encryption process usually involves going down to the chipset and reading some information that was there. So again, it's trying to establish the trust level. It seems complicated. I got no help. They're not. They're not the help. Yeah, that, in general, that's kind of the story of our all our lives. I think. That, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else got stuck. So Sharon, if you could send me the link to your. Get GitHub just send in an email. I'll post it on okay. the meet the meeting. Okay. So people can get to the GitHub and then I'll also uh, be uploading this week the recording. Okay. So you wanna stop the recording? So again, our next meeting's in July and I hope you can make it. Uh,